An options menu is a common use for saving and loading data. Let's take a look at updating our options menu so we can save the settings and load them up as needed. Inside of our project, if we hit play and we hit the O key to open our options menu, we have a basic options menu with some accessibility options. I could change the difficulty to easy and update the scale and then hit resume. And if I go back into the menu, it saved it. However, if I quit out, come back into my project and hit O for options again, they are back of the defaults. And that's because it's not saving it to disk, it's not saving it between sessions. So let's look at how we're going to do that. If we look at our option system, if we look at our menu for the options, we're basically, when we resume, we are talking to our game instance. We can see that right here. And we are sending that information over to our game instance and storing it in a variable called options. So if we go over to our game instance under classes, GI underscore our game, it's pretty simple. We have a game options variable, which contains a structure, which is basically a group of variables. And then whenever we call update game options, we update it with our changed options. Let's work on saving those out to disk. First thing we need is our actual save game object. We'll go back to our content browser. Under classes, we'll right click. We'll go to blueprint class. We're gonna type in save at the bottom like we did before in our previous videos. So we can choose save game as our class type, select it. We're gonna name it SG underscore options because this is the save game for our options. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Inside of here, well, we need to save something. Since our game instance holds a structure that holds our options, it's a variable type options struct, that's what we're gonna to wanna to put into our save game. Going back to our save game, we add a new variable. We'll call this one options. And we want this of type options struct. So we'll type in options. We can find here options struct finished. I'll select this, compile and save, and you can see we have our default values. Now keep in mind the default values of the structure and the default values of our save game may be different. And whenever we create a new save game, it's going to use these values. I'm actually gonna change these over to easy for the difficulty and 0 0.5 for the different sound volumes. That way we can make sure that they are changed. We'll compile and save. Now our save game itself is done. We're only gonna use this to store our options structure. We can close that down. Now, where do we want to save and load this information? We're gonna put it in our game instance because our game instance is storing these actual options. So having it handle the saving and loading is a pretty simple thing to do. And this is gonna be done the same way we have handled saving and loading before. We're gonna start with our save game event. So we'll right click, we'll type in custom event, add a custom event. We'll call this one save options. And we're gonna call this whenever we wanna save our options to our storage. We'll drag off the wire. We'll create a save game. Since we don't have a save game at this point and we're not storing one for later use, we need to create one whenever we wanna save it out. The save game class is gonna be SG underscore options. And from that save game class, we're gonna to wanna to update the options variable that's inside of it. Drag off the return value, type in options, you can see we have get and set options. We're gonna set the options that is inside of our save game. And I'll hook up the wire, so now it's going to call that. What options do we wanna set? Well, we want the ones inside of our game instance. And since we're in our game instance, we can drag from the variable list, drop it, get a copy of those options inside of our game instance, and assign it to our setter. So now we are setting inside of our save game a copy of our game options in our game instance. We're good there. Now we need to save it out to a slot. Drag off the wire, type in save game, choose the save game to slot. Which object do we wanna save? We wanna save the one we just created. We'll drag off the return value from our create save game object and plug it into the save game object. Also double click a few times on the wire just to clean it up a little bit. What slot name do we want to call this? Well, we'll call this our option slot. You'll notice we're creating a different save game, 
not like we did before. We had save game basic. Now we have save game options. We're also using a different slot. So this way we can have different slots or files on our storage for different things. You don't have to, it can all be one save game, but for my intent and purposes, maybe I don't want to load the entire save game just to have my options being loaded up. Once this is done, we can compile and save, and that's all we need to do. When we call this, it's going to create a new object, update the variable inside of that save game object with our current options, and save it to disk. Now we need a way to load it. So we're going to right click custom event. We're going to do load options. What do we want to do when we load the options? Well, we want to make sure we have a save game and then we want to go ahead and load it. So we'll drag off and we'll type in does save for does save game exist. I'm going to copy our slot name from the other node, or we can type in options slot. Either one works perfectly fine. If it does load up, we'll drag off the return value and type in if to give us a branch. If it does, we want to load the save game. So off of the true, we'll type in load save game from slot. What's our slot name? Well, it's option slot. You can paste that if you still have it, or you can type in option slot. Once it loads up our option slot, we want the variable from it. Remember our return value here is a generic save game. So we have to cast this to our SG underscore options. So we have the correct save game that's being loaded. Assuming this loads up, we want to get the options from it. So our saved options variable that we saved up to disk. And we want to set it to the options variable that's inside of our game instance here. I'll drag off of variables from the left again. We're going to set it. We're going to hook up the options inside of our save game right here to the options inside of our local game instance. Plug it into the wire at the top. And that's all we're going to need to do for this. However, there's something important here. Remember before I had us change our save game to have a different set of options. If we were to do nothing right now, if our options didn't exist, our little save for the options, we would have the options here inside of our game instance and not the actual ones that we set up and changed. So off of our false branch, we want to actually create the save game. So we're going to create a save game object. This is going to give us a save game that's of the default save game settings. So select the class save game options. From the return value, because it's of type save game, we can just simply get the options out of it. And then like we did here before, we'll drag off from the left. We'll set the game instances version to the save games version. And now whenever this is called, you assume probably when we load the project, whenever we load the options, we're now either going to have the options that we have adjusted, that we have saved before, or the default version. So let's go ahead and actually check that out and make sure it works. But we need somewhere to actually, well, save and load our options. And that's back inside of our user interface. It's also inside of our game mode for the loading version. Let's close down our game instance. In our classes folder, we're going to go to our GM underscore our game. This is our game mode. And right now, all we're doing when it starts up is we're waiting a little bit. We're mimicking a load screen, basically, and updating the user interface for our collectibles. We also now want it to load up the options that we have saved. We have our code in our game instance. The nice thing about game instances is almost anything could get them. So we'll right click. We'll do get game instance. And here you can see the game instance can be gotten. We need to make sure it's our specific one. So we're going to cast it to GI underscore our game. So it's our version of our game instance, which has our custom code. And then from the as GI our game node, we're going to go ahead and run the load options function. And this will load up our options off of the disk or create a new save game with our customized options. OK, that's pretty simple. But we have no way of testing it until we actually save it. So somewhere we need our interface to save these options out. Going back to our content browser, let's go into our UMG folder, go into our UMG underscore options menu. Once it's loaded, we'll go into our graph on the top right. 
And on the top, we can see our event graph. This is our primary spot where we put our code. And when you click resume, that's when we're going to want it to be saved once we've left our menu. So in here, we can look through our code. And the last two parts are setting our input back to the game and removing our options from the screen. So right before that, let's go ahead and move these off to the side a little bit and move our little reroute node off to the side. We want to talk to our game instance and ask it to save our options. Like before, right click, get game instance. After we have our game instance, we're going to cast it to our game instance, our game. We'll go ahead and hook it up so that way we make sure it runs our cast. Inside of our game instance, we have our save options function. So dragging off of our game instance, our game, we can save the options. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and finish closing out our menu. So at this point, inside of our user interface, we can save our options. Inside of our game mode, we can load our options. Let's go ahead and check it out. We'll go back to our main map. We'll hit play. We'll hit O for our options menu. Now you might notice something different. Our difficulty is easy, and our sound and music are now in the middle. And that's not the same as we had before. This is because we're using those values inside of our save game that we adjusted. We'll adjust our scale, let's say all the way to the top, our difficulty up to epic, and we'll resume our game. If we go back into our options, we should see them changed. That's what we expect. It did save them whenever we were inside the project. It was just when we quit that it didn't. So I'll quit out now. I'll hit play to go back into our project, and we'll hit O, and if everything worked right, now our options menu is larger, since our scale is up to the top, and our difficulty is epic, because we're loading our save game like we had planned on. So at this point in time, our options menu is now working fully and saving and persisting between each session. And that is the basics of saving out and loading something a little more complex. We're using a structure, which is a bunch of variables in one variable, and we're easily saving and loading them out without any issues.